Welcome to Making a Musician. I have decided to wear the most wrinkled shirt that I own today just for you. You're welcome. So today I wanted to make a quick video on score prep because it's really important and nobody ever talks about it. I remember in school somebody brought it up like once and the way they put it was just like really convoluted, really unnecessarily complicated and aesthetically pleasing and it was really annoying and I just thought this is stupid, it must not matter, uh, which is not true. But uh, so this is my super simple guide to score prep. For a long time I didn't really know how to prep my scores and so they would just look really chaotic. Like people would say that to me all the time. They would look at my music and be like, oh my God, like why is there so much writing everywhere? And it was cause I didn't really have a system and so in rehearsal, I would just like chaotically scrawl whatever somebody was telling me to do in my music and uh, it worked, but it wasn't like the best system ever, right? So today I'm gonna walk you through what I do and what I use to score prep. Now a little disclaimer, this is just kind of what I do and this is what works for me and honestly, it'll probably change and evolve over the next couple of years. So maybe we'll get like score prep part two, like, I don't know, something exciting like that. But I think this is a really good jumping off place if you have no idea what you're doing. But definitely try this and then like add your own little twist to it and make sure that you are incorporating things that you need. All right, before we talk about how I actually prep my scores, let's talk about why score prep matters because literally if you'd asked me like two years ago, I've been like, this is stupid, it's a waste of time, it's people being annoying, and they just care about like the like aesthetics of their score and that doesn't really matter, uh, which is not entirely true. So a while ago, I had a rehearsal for something that I didn't have a lot of time to learn. And so I came to rehearsal as prepared as I could, but I just wasn't like, my version of prepared, like my version of being prepared for something for a rehearsal is like I could sing it like half asleep in the dark, falling off a log, like just like, just incapacitated and it would still come out right. It wasn't learned to that point because I didn't have a lot of time to learn it. So it was like as learned as it could be and as prepared as it could be. So we get to the rehearsal process and we're doing music and staging rehearsal at the same time, which is really horrible and really stressful. And I was just like writing things in my music as fast as I could. I didn't really have a system for what needed to go where. And it was just a mess. And I had done the basics of like highlighting my part and writing in a translation. And that was kind of like it. And so then, so basically once I had like notes written in that I had gotten, translations were written in, staging directions were written in, and then like, what other characters are doing, like all of that written in. It was just really overwhelming to look at my music. And then it was really unfortunate because in rehearsals, I kept making the same couple mistakes over and over again because I couldn't find the note of like myself writing that I got a note about that and like to fix something. I didn't see it when I was looking at my music because my music was so like chaotic. Um, and so that's really embarrassing because you don't want the director to think that you're not listening to their notes or that like you don't care what they're saying. Um, so basically that rehearsal was terrible and I hated every moment of it. And then I went home and I asked everyone I knew what they did for score prep and I took all of the ideas that made sense to me and I thought would be really helpful. And this is how I prep my scores now because otherwise you are in a rehearsal and you feel really overwhelmed and you're not doing things the way you should be doing them. So prep your scores. So here we have a fresh score that I need to prep. It is Magic Flute. And then we have this. This is like my case of all the things I need to prep a score. And this always goes with me when I have rehearsals and I go places because it also has all the things in it that I need to do things like write in stage directions and just notes and anything like that. So let's go in order of uh, what I use and then I'll show you how I use it. So step one is I have these little rulers that I got from Staples, um, super simple. So I use those to make sure my highlighting is straight because uh, you gotta highlight everything that you sing, all of your text, everything. I used to think this was really dumb because I came from um, being an instrumentalist and I was like, why do you need to highlight your part? And then you realize that like, oh, cause your part's not always in the same spot all the time. Um, and so I just really like these because they're light and I've had problems before where I will highlight something in a score and then you can't really read it cause the ink is too dark. Um, so these are really great. Also they have like a fine tip uh, so this is nice for things like dynamics, like circling them, I'll show you that later, and also for dialogue underlining and stuff like that. But I love these. Okay, then we have these pens. These are uh, Frixon, they're a pilot. I love these, you can get them on Amazon. 
Um, they're kind of expensive, but they're really worth it in my opinion because you can erase them, which is like the craziest thing, but like I'm actually serious about that. Like you can actually erase them, they work, it's amazing. Um, and so this is really good because sometimes you'll have a director who's super specific about like what they want your translation to be, which to me is annoying, but fine, that's what it is. So you wanna like write in your translation and then you have it for rehearsal, but if they decide they want you to have something else, you can erase it and you can just like, have it be whatever they tell you it is. Uh, and also, then you're not writing with pencil because for me, my handwriting is a little bit wild and so pencil smudges and then I have no idea what I wrote and it's entirely useless. So that is important. Uh, next up we have flags. So, oh my God. Um, I will put a flag on every page that I sing on. I know that some people think that that's excessive, but that keeps me from missing music when I'm in the learning process. So I make sure that, okay, there's a flag on that page, so I know I need to look at that page. Otherwise, it's really easy to skip things. Now, I also um, have a little flag system that works really well for me, so I'll do a different color for recits, ensembles, and arias. This is really good because then in the practicing, if I'm like, okay, I don't have a lot of time, let's just go through the recitatives, I can find them really easily and they'll be like, like maybe this could be like recits, ensembles, arias. And so if I'm only practicing recits, I know I only need to go through the blue tags. And since all of the recits have blue tags on them because every page I sing on has a tag, really easy to find all my recits. Also really nice when it comes to rehearsal because then when they're like let's do the recitative in act one in the third scene you're like going through all of act one um, trying to find this stupid recit just you're sweating and you can't find it and you're really stressed out you don't have to do that you just go look at the blue tags in you know whatever act you're in and then you find it it's easy uh, just just this is how I do it this is how I recommend other people do it if you hate it, that's fine. And then I will also, you can mark like important acts and sections like at the top with big text. So that's very helpful as well. And then finally, we're not gonna use this today, um, but we have a pencil for like rehearsal notes. Uh, usually I'll use this for musical notes. And then we have this. So I uh, have more sticky notes than I know what to do with in life. And so I try to use them for everything and they're really great for score prep. So I will cut off the part that's not sticky. So I'm left with a section that's like, maybe like this big. Um, and then when we're doing staging, I write my staging on this and I put it in the music, like where I'm supposed to do the actual staging. So if it was like, you know, I'll like cut it. And if it was like, Okay, like I'm supposed to move on this measure. Oh my god, I opened right to my aria. Hey girl. So if I'm supposed to move right on that measure, I'll put the sticky note like right here. And then when the stage director inevitably decides that they want to change the staging, it's not written into my score with pen. And I can just pick up the sticky note and like move it. Because I feel like all of the time when, you know, you're first staging things, stuff changes a lot. And like you'll... It, a lot of it is like they're doing the same thing, they just want it somewhere else so then I don't have to like erase and write 15 times on my score, I can just pick it up and move it. it. Makes everything super, super easy. Okay, so the other thing I recommend, and maybe this is controversial, maybe people will hate me for this, uh, is the Nico Castell. Now, I have these from like a version that I downloaded. I've gotten them printed previously at like Staples in these like nice books. Here at Making a Musician, we recommend being like somewhat conversational in all the languages that we sing in. However, um, you know, that might not be you right away. And so, you know, that's really nice because then you don't have to translate like a, everything word for word. Like you have a good idea of like sentence structure, syntax, um, and then you can like translate and it's not such a hot mess. But um, in the meantime, Castell is a really great resource. When I'm making a translation for my part and my character, I like to make sure that I know what every word means and I've looked it up myself. But for the other characters, um, especially for things where like I'm not on stage, I'm okay with just using the Castell and not looking at every single word myself. Um, because, I don't know, I'm a busy girl and it's kind of cheating, but shh, it's fine. Okay, so if I was going to actually prep this score cover to cover right now, which I absolutely am not going to do, let me move that, I would go in and I would write like a translation. Oh my God, Baron Ryder, you're giving me so much information. Okay, I would go in and I would write a translation for every single word in the score. And like, we don't have 10,000 hours for me to do that right now. Based on the plates that you're using, I either like to write my translation here. So I would write like, help, or else. 
So I prefer to have pretty, I mean, I didn't nail it here. It's not the best work we've ever seen, but um, I appreciate having pretty much word for word underneath. Sometimes you have really annoying like English translations, but you don't want to get rid of them because then if you do a production in English and you need that translation, like you want to have it there. So then in those cases, I'll write up here, like here, these are erasable, so I can do it. I go help with that here. And then for this line, I would write the translation like kind of where the text starts, like up there. Look at these. Look at that. Like, y'all, when people told me that there were erasable pens, I was like, you're full of it. Like, that's not it. That doesn't exist. Y'all. All right, so let's go to the part where I actually sing and we can prep this bad boy. Um, now, ask any singer with their salt what the most important part is and it's picking your highlighter color. Um, I don't know why, but we like to pick colors. I like to pick colors that I feel like reflect the character. And I have literally procrastinated learning a role because I couldn't decide what highlighter color I wanted. It feels like a big deal. So stupid. I'm feeling like throwing things on the ground. Okay, I'm feeling like using purple. Now that I've just thrown that across the room, okay. I'm gonna use this purple highlighter. Um, I like to have the text highlighted. Is that a a choice that some people will hate? Yes. Good for you. These also have that like window. So that's really nice. And then you just, boom. Oh my God, so chill, so easy. Amazing. Okay, now here's the fun part is that we're not done highlighting yet. So then I will pick a different color. I like the blue. And what we want to do is we want to uh, look at our dynamic markings and like, like stuff like that. Okay, so I literally like looked it up. And then even better, 120 to 156. So then I'm gonna put, like, I'm gonna make myself a nice little, like, over here, we'll just do it here. Quarter note equals 120 to 156. And then I know when I'm practicing with my metronome marking, I don't have to look up, like, oh my God, what is Allegro Maestoso? Like, girl, we know. And the other thing I do is I take, that's why I like that these have, like, this kind of a point. Here is I circle all my dynamic markings, because in uh, Mozart, all of our markings are gonna be in the orchestra. Then we like highlight that. Even though it's not my part, I think it's still really important to be super aware of where the, the music is getting louder, where we have significant dynamic changes. Um, because like, then we see forte, and then we have old Sichranist is still forte, but then we have here piano. My lieber Sohn. And then we continue piano. Like even this forzando here, like that's not really for me, but I think it's still important that I can see that it's going on. And so I am gonna highlight it because everything in the score Mozart cared enough to put in. And so that means I need to be aware of it. And it's gonna shape my interpretation, even if it's not intended for me. Because like the thing about scores is like, yeah, I'm not playing this music, but this is um, talking about my, like, this is like my internal texture, my internal, like, emotional landscape is this, like, section right here. Bum, 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 bum. And so it's really important that I know that there's a sforzando there so that I can decide what that is for me emotionally. It was really a nice little, like, soapboxy moment, wasn't it? So then we are gonna highlight the crescendos. Da -da 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 oh, yeah, that's way better than drawing a box around it. Okay. Go me. Let's go ahead and write in our transition. Oh, and I'm checking. Look at that, tremble not, my dear son. Okay, I'm writing in a little bit of a weird angle with this camera, so like, bear with me. This is like a very, the thing that's frustrating about German to English is like the syntax is very different, right? So I'm gonna write this in, uh, like word for word under the words. 
uh, and then I'm going to write this thing in parentheses over here. So let's let me do that right now. I'm going to write the part in parentheses, like up here, also in parentheses. So I'm going to say a young man such as you can best console this deeply, aff the deeply afflicted heart of a mother. OK, fine. Um, you know what? I'll write it down here because maybe I'll need to put like stage directions up here and I probably won't need to put anything here. So perfect. So now we see that like I've taken a lot of information on this page and totally broken it up so that it feels a lot more digestible. And then no matter what you're asking me for, I know where to find the information on the page. And it's really easy for me to find in the moment. And then I can really like do exactly what someone's asking of me in a rehearsal process because I have all this information already like categorized, coded, I understand everything. Girl. And then I will put this, can you see? Yeah, right on the corner like that. And they're all going in the corner. But then I'm gonna flip this over so it's going the right way. Uh, and I'm gonna write do, 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 do. Because that is a section that we very likely are gonna wanna take this from. And so I don't have to look through it. I don't have to flip through pages. I know where it is. And then I'm there, not necessarily to read the music, but I'm there and I'm ready to write in notes. So then I'm gonna do this for all of the rest of the music that I sing in this opera. Uh, so I will show you when I'm done. Okay, I did it. It's done. The score is prep. Let me just walk you through a couple things. So the arias are marked in blue with tabs at the bottom so I know exactly where they are. Translation, you literally saw me do this page. Um, everything like that. Something that I do that I think is kind of interesting that I didn't know to do until somebody told me, so now I'll tell you, is, um, okay, so. If you look at like this measure right here, you'll see that I highlight all of the articulation markings and I think that that's really beneficial. Actually in this score, I found articulations that I didn't even know were in the score. Um, and I have done this role before and this is music I'm really, really familiar with. So that's always a really great thing to do. So I have this, then I have um, my yellow tab, which is dialogue. So I just highlighted all of the dialogue and then um, we're not actually using this dialogue in the production I'm in, we're using their own version of it, which is pretty standard for this opera. Um, but I prepared it anyways, and then I'm not quite sure how I would do a translation for this in the score, just because there's not a lot of space. But you know what, we'll burn that bridge when we get to it. Then we have the, you know, the, the aria, also in blue, the second aria. And then in purple, uh, the final ensemble which, uh, yeah, and then also I translated all of the stage directions and things like that. And then just to wrap it up at the top, I put three tabs. So we have the overture, the first act, and the second act. So that's it. That's how I prep my scores. Thank you so much for following along. If you liked it, feel free to like the video, comment, and subscribe.